Hi guys, welcome to this week's plumberparts.co.uk video. Today we're going to be looking at auto venting radiators. Yes, you heard it, radiators that let the air out of the top of them on their own. There's a lot of benefits to having these. We're going to be looking at Aladdin auto vents and the whole universe of vents that these guys make for the different types of radiators that you can find in your home. Yes, we are going to install these on every one of the radiators in my house. I'm going to tell you what they do, how they work, why they're better than some of the other products out there as well. These are especially effective if you're doing massive contracts and you're putting in hundreds of radiators. But there's a couple of things you need to know about how to vent these, how they work, when you've installed them on a new system and on an old system and what to expect when you pop them in. All the tools that we use in today's video you'll be able to find on our Amazon store. So I hope you enjoy the video. Please hit the subscribe button, please hit the like, please hit the notification as well. And let's get on with today's video. Remember to hold tap. Also learn more about the plumbing in your home using our interactive house. And if you're looking for a plumber to do this work for you, pop over to our website and search Find Your Plumber. So then, what do these do? And we've got loads of them here, all these different types. And you might think, right, that they all do different things or anything like that. But the basic principle of these works in exactly the same way. They just have different applications. Like for instance, we've got one here that will screw into the old place of an actual radiator bleed vent. I mean, how cool is that? So it's got the little hole up the middle that will allow us to vent air out of here. Now this is the micro. Um, I'm going to list all of these in the description below as well so you can see which one they are. It's worth noting the two most common forms of auto vents you're going to come across will be the HV30C that has a removable and replaceable cartridge and the HV30 which is the non-replaceable cartridge model. We've got ones that will go on like a Barlow rad so that'll be handy for you to show how they work and all that um, and then you can get packs that come in too so you've got a blank pack and you've also got the HV30 which is one that doesn't have a removable cartridge uh, totally fine it's just got a small hole in the back here worked really really well just doesn't have that replacement cartridge um, aspect to it a few things you need to think about these will work on pressurized so closed systems and open or vented systems major differences between these is that obviously the pressures are different so how do these beasts work well they've got a series of water sensitive seals so that when they're dry i.e air is present they'll let air out because the seals are in an open position as soon as they come into contact with water the set of seals expand and stop any water coming out successfully venting the radiator as soon as they dry again the seals will contract and start to let air out again these have a five-year guarantee and if the seals ever fail there's a fail safe system at the end so they always fail in the closed position meaning you'll never get any leaks it's worth noting as well that there are some knockoff versions of these valves they usually come in a green packet they tend to leak when the seals fail and they only have about a two-year guarantee on them as well so make sure you always buy the blue packet from Aladdin now the thing is about these and a common misconception is is that you pop one of these on the radiator and you've got a radiator full of water you open the rad up you're gonna hear air hissing out and it's gonna vent it like that that's not how these work you can use them like that you're probably gonna to need to leave them a couple of hours and the hotter the system is and the higher the pressure the better these products Although they're very, very good for helping you vent out a whole new system, especially if you've got like 100 radiators, you could put one of these on each one of those rads and that would get rid of the labour cost of you going round and venting each one of them rads out. But also what they'll do, they'll make sure that the radiators are always getting rid of any air that may come through. Now this can be a particular problem when you've got a new system, you've put loads of water in, there's a lot of air in that water as it goes into the system and that separates over like a couple of days. These will allow that air to come out. But also for the lifetime of the heating system, they're always going to allow any air coming out through either oxidisation, um, through maybe the pump speed set too high, is that you have less air sat on the top of a radiator, therefore you'll have less oxidisation, less rust going on. But also your radiators will obviously be full up which means they'll all fully get hot, which means they're going to emit the most amount of heat and be the most efficient for the heating system. So why don't we have a look now at how we fit one of these on this little radiator that we've got behind us here. And I'll also show you a couple of the little features of it as well. I'll just whip this out. This was one that we didn't need to use on a job and I thought it'd be perfect for you to see how they can work. So, so usually for these, I just get a big set nice big screwdriver in there this is if you're going to be fitting on a new rad you just screw that on there like so and then we've got a rubber o-ring just pops on there and then we can do that up and 
and there we go, that's it, it's done. Now, if you want to replace the cartridge on this, like I showed you a minute ago, all you need to do is get your little tool. Sometimes they're a little bit wider, but you can just pop them in this little hole. Look, and just undo that, like so. And there you go, that's the cartridge out. The little valve in there will jump through, stop any water coming through, which is easy, which is great. Look, you can see you've got a little hole there. We'll just push back in there like so. And then you can just push that up there like that, and that's it, the job's done. I'll just show you the one of the other types that you're gonna find, you'll, probably, you'll find this a bit more common on some of the older type radiators that we get out there. This is one I whipped out on a job a couple of weeks back, and that's just, lived here for a little while. As you can see, this has got the usual screw end. I always keep Lee key on a carabiner on my keys. Everyone should have a carabiner like that. And look, there you go, there's my bleed key, ready to go. And then you just slacken these off as usual. And rather than having the whole key in there, so look, now you've got that little key there, exactly the same thread with a hole there on that, like that. So your best option, your best bet is to pop some PTFE around this thread here, then you can screw that in and then leave that on the end of the radiator and then that will nice and lightly vent the radiator. So then guys, and I know I don't have a bum crack, yay. Um, firstly, what I'm gonna show you is the procedure that you'd use for one of these if you're putting it on an empty radiator. So this would be when you're fitting a new rad or you're working on a new heating system and you're putting these on every radiator in the house. First thing you're gonna do is get your little U key and just make sure this is done up. And then you can take off this little shroud here and look, hidden in the shroud just there is another little U key. So you end up with loads of these. So remember what I said, this has got a little damper on it, a little sprung loaded damper. So in a minute, I'm gonna show you how to change the cartridge on this. Um, and that's when this will come into play. But let's do this first. So we'll just screw this on here, like so. Just nip that up with the... with me adjustables. It's got a little rubber O-ring on there, so that'll seal it up nicely. And then, because we've got a completely empty radiator here, we've got pressurized water on the other side of this TRV. You're not gonna hear loads of air running out of this, okay? That's not how these work. Remember, these allow air to percolate out slowly. It wants a slow amount of water, once this gets filled up, to get onto those washers, to expand them, and to seal in the closed position so they're up in what would be standard operation. So let's open these two now and then I'll show you how to vent quickly as if you're on a job and you wanna get your radiators filled up. It makes me realize I've really got to do all the sealing underneath that windowsill. Emily can't see it though, so. Right, so open this up, then you'll hear a little bit of pressure come in. So I can hear a bit of air coming out already, so it's doing its job. But what we can do to speed up this process, if we're on a job, I mean, the good thing is, imagine you've fitted 20 radiators in a house. How long does it take you to vent 20 radiators? I mean, how long does it take to vent 10 radiators? If you have all of these on here like that, it makes the job so much easier if you can just do it like that. But if you wanted to speed it up, all you need to do is just slacken this off. Slacken this off half a turn. And there we go, we've got water there now. Obviously do that with a little bit of a towel. And then that's it. The radiator is now vented and it's done. Remember what I said earlier on in the video, guys, you'll only be able to do this particular thing with the HV30C. If you've got any of the other types, you'll need to slightly unscrew them to manually vent the radiator. But let's say in five years time, we start to notice that we've got a little bit of air in the top of this radiator and we think, right, this needs changing. Now, we don't actually have to turn the radiator off to change the cartridge on this because of that little damper. Let me show you. So you are gonna get a little bit of water splurging out straight up, and there you go. You can take the cartridge out. There's no air coming out there anymore. There's no water coming out. I can pop a new cartridge in. Here's a new one here. There you go. In goes a new cartridge. We vented the new radiator. It's all done, and now I never have to worry about venting this radiator anymore. Now, like I said, remember, if you've got 10 radiators and it's on a system that is gravity fed, they can take ages to vent. This will always let air out, it doesn't matter how low the pressure is, so F and E tank systems, gravity fed systems, tend to have a lot lower pressures. 
you could get 10 radiators, put all of them on, put all of these on each one, open up the thing, and then just get on with clearing up. As soon as you get heat coming into the bottom of the radiator, these tend to start venting quicker. Look at this table that I'm showing you now. That shows you there the different speeds in venting that it can take at different temperatures. I actually think they're doing themselves a little bit of a disservice here because if you've got a cold system, you've got one bar in the thing, it doesn't really take that long. This would be filled up and vented probably in about 20 minutes. I mean, that's enough for me. If I, if I could just go around, there's 10 radiators, I could vent all of them in 20 minutes. You know, usually a radiator takes 10 minutes to vent, doesn't it, properly? And then after that, you finish the job, you go around, you, you get slugs of air and water going about. These are doing a job for you in every room of the house while you're filling up. So they're well worth putting onto the job, they're well worth installing. But what if you're the DIYer with a current heating system and you think, wow, these look like a good idea, how do I fit them? Let's pop to another radiator and I'll show you how. Let's say you're installing one on a towel rail. You're, a, you're not a plumber. Now these are the steps that you need to be able to do to complete this job successfully. Firstly, we close both valves. Now sometimes you'll find that one of these is a thermostatic valve. Well, just twist that all the way until it says zero. But with these, we're just gonna close them down. And then this one should only have a half a turn or a quarter turn on it, because this is a balance system already. Right, so they're shut now. Now, we dissipate any pressure in the radiator before we do anything else. We do that with the radiator key, which once you've done this, you're not gonna need. And the other reason that we dissipate the pressure like this is to make sure that the valves are holding. We don't wanna be unscrewing this big thing here and one of the valves has failed down at the bottom and we're allowing pressured water or water from the loft tank through. You're just gonna start swearing pretty quickly if that happens. A little bit of toilet roll. We shouldn't have too much in here. And there we go, that's stopped. Pair of adjustables. Slacken that off. Take that up. I can see there's water right at the top already. So we've got a full radiator, so we won't need to use the procedure that we did earlier. So I'm just going to pop this in here. And there we go. That's now on. All I need to do now is open up the valves at the bottom and make sure we haven't got any leaks or anything like that. And then that's it, done. I can do that to every radiator in the house now just like that, and then I know that all my radiators are gonna auto vent. All I need to do after this is maybe top the pressure up, or if I've got an F&E tank, it will just auto feed itself. And we can even add one of these to this cast iron type radiator here. Just watch. We've shut off both the valves. I've slackened this off to dissipate the pressure, but also to make sure that those valves are holding. That's really important. And now I'm just gonna whip that out, but the only difference is, is this time we have to pop a little bit of PTFE around this thread here. Then we can screw this in, this piece comes into two. This is the bit that we can change at a later date. This doesn't have a damper in it, so as you can see, we can see all the way through that. Um, so when you do change these over, you will have to shut the valves off. Um, so, very simple to do. Where's my PTFE? Oh, I might as well get ready to do this now, might not I, with a bit of PTFE. There's no point taking everything apart and not being just ready to whack this in straight away. Now it's a good thing to show you as well. So on this one, I won't need to use my jumper. I can just go straight on with the auto vent right on the end like that, and that will seal up nicely using that little rubber O-ring just there. We've got one flat just to go on, just so we can tighten that up. If you want to, if you want to be sure, you can use a bit of PTFE on this. It's totally up to you, but it should be fine. There we go, all done. So then guys, there you go, all done. I thought it'd be nice for you guys to learn a little bit about a small product, a really small little thing that you can do to each one of your radiators that a DIY could easily do. If you shut each valve off, that's all you've got to do, and that's it, it's done. Uh, you can pop these on, and then you'll know that your radiators will self-vent any air that gets into the system or any air that the system creates. Remember, if you've got a system that keeps creating air, but you haven't got any leaks, it's probably gonna need topping up with inhibitor. I've done a video on how to do that. If you find that you keep having to top the system up, but all the radiators have got water coming out the top of them, they're all hot and everything, then you've probably got a leak somewhere else in the system. It's nothing to do with these. So, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It's a nice short one. It's just giving you the knowledge, telling you about these products, showing you how they work, showing you why I've installed them on my house system, and how they're gonna work for me in the future as well. So, if you want any more help, any more information, 
Kevin, bang a comment below. There's a big plumber parts community out there now. Also, if you want to get involved in the AL Army as well, it's a great way for you to support my channel. You can click on the link below and sign up to my Patreon. It's about three pounds a month. You'll get access to live streams with us on Thursday nights to the AL Army, where we sit and have a beer together. You get a sneak peek of next week's video. You can select the song that is just about coming through now at the end of each video as well, and also have a chat with the guys in the community there too. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video, guys. Oh, one more thing. If you want to get any of the tools that I've used in this video, then click on the Amazon link below. I've got all the tools of this brilliant bag, every tool that's in it, and every tool that's in my van as well. If I've missed anything out, comment below, and I'll see if I can find it for you. Anyway, have a great week, guys. I'll see you in next week's video. And remember to hold tight. See you soon. Who's the happiest about that radiator working? I think we all know who. Where is he? Look at him. Oi, right, George. George, are you happy that the radiators are going to auto vent now? Do you mind if I scrub you? Just here. Ooh, hello. Yeah, mate, you're well happy about those rads, aren't you? Meow. That sigh, George. And then you're venting, 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 and then you're venting this radiator. I always do it with a towel and far more proud, waiting for the job to lose all the price tag. And I know to win seems like the best way to be. You don't have to be mad to disagree. And if you got 20 rounds or 20 less, a piece of This radiator Sitting down in the van With a poor man Waiting for the job to pay On that price tag I'm also venting I'm also venting Years later In the end it gets trapped In the rack Will always be your magic For release outside I do I do that who has subscribed to Plumber Pass? If you haven't clicked the subscribe button at the notification you have it, also check out my vlog, Times of Jane, and join us over at the ALRV. See you next week, guys. Remember to hold tight. Thank you. <laughs>